Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of the series. Today we're going to continue with Aku Aku, our nice little mask here. Oop, there we go. Uh, so, we're going to jump into ZBrush. As I mentioned in the last video, I'm trying to do this series in such a way that anyone can follow. So, if you're just a beginner student, I'm going to be using some very, very simple tools inside of ZBrush. So, make sure to try and follow. Make sure to later on share some of your progresses. Uh, I'll be happy to, to give them a, a look and give you some, some feedback if you guys want to. Now, um, we need to bring this thing into ZBrush. Uh, sorry for my hair, it's a mess. It's been very hot this <laughs> last couple of days here in, in Mexico. So um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been uh, difficult for uh, frizzy hair. Now I'm just gonna grab all of these guys right here and uh, I'm actually gonna combine them in a single object. So I'm gonna go poly modeling and I'm gonna combine. I wanna keep everything in a single object, a single sub tool as well inside of, uh, inside of ZBrush just so that it's easier to manage. We could of course split all of these guys into different um, elements or different uh, like subtools, but I, I think uh, ones should be fine. Now, whenever I export, I, I usually export, I used to export in OBJ format, which is like the traditional OBJ, but nowadays FBX is supported everywhere, even ZBrush. It's been supported for a long time, actually. So I'm just gonna do an FBX. There's only one extra window you're gonna get uh, if you export as, as XBX, FBX. Let's see, Aku, Aku, there we go. Let's call this Aku. Aku base mesh, remember, keeping files clean is always, always super cool or super important. Actually, I need to set this project first. There we go. Now we go here. Aku Aku. Aku Aku base mesh. There we go. So I'm going to jump into ZBrush and I'm just going to go, uh, if you press comma, you get rid of that thing. Import. We're going to jump into our file. I'm listening to Halo Symphony Orchestra. Very cool. Highly recommend it. Very like powerful music. It's a shame that we can't share music. I would love to, to have some soundtracks while we work. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, due to copyright infringement, uh, we can't do that. There are some free stuff, but I think no music is also, also good. So there we go. This is one of the things you're going to get whenever you import an FBX. It's going to want to know whether you want to import the materials as poly groups, which for us, that works very nicely. So I'm just gonna hit OK. And uh, what you're gonna see now, if I just draw and hit my letter T, if I turn on my uh, polyframe right here, each specific material shares its own uh, polyframe, which is really, really good for us. Now, I am actually gonna get rid of that and we're gonna do something different. But before that, uh, just a quick reminder, guys, if you've never used ZBrush before, then yeah, it might be a little bit difficult to follow what I'm about to do. I'm still going to keep it really simple for those of you that are just beginning your, your ZBrush career or your ZBrush uh, like course. Um, if not, make sure to check the links down below. We, we always have some nice discounts for you guys. So make sure to check. I, I did a ZBrush uh, for beginners. Uh, I think it's ZBrush 2021 for beginners. So check that out. I'm going to go into geometry and I'm going to divide this a couple of times. So I'm going to say one, two, let's do three times. And the reason I want to divide it is I want to make sure that the base mesh is really, really soft, as you can see here, so that when we do dynamesh, we are not, uh, we, we, we don't keep, or we get rid of all of those hard edges that we had before. So we're going to dynamesh from this position right here. So now I am going to go, before we dynamesh, I'm going to go all the way down to polygroups, and I'm going to say right here, uh, group visible. So now each individual, I'm sorry, all the groups. So each individual piece of geometry, each island of a geometry will have its own uh, polygroup, which is very important because when I dynamesh, I don't want things to stick together. I want each individual piece to, to be dynamesh, but to remain as a separate piece. So making sure that we have other groups so that each individual element has a different polygroup is super, super important. I'm going to turn off this thing and I'm going to go up into geometry. And now I'm going to go where it says right here, dynamesh, and I'm going to make sure that groups is turned on. I'm going to go with a higher resolution. Actually, I think 128 is going to be fine. So I'm just going to hit Dynamesh. I'm not going to freeze the, the subdivision levels. I'm just going to jump straight into like the, the Dynamesh. And there you go. You can barely tell the difference, right? Like as far as we can tell, nothing happened. But everything is now Dynamesh, as you can see right here. Now, uh, I do think that this is a little bit low for what I'm going for. So I'm going to go double the resolution. And I'm just going to like add something there and Dynamesh. Just that it detects a change and uh, creates the dynamic and uh, that's better. That's, that's a nicer uh, resolution. 
So let's start with the with the eyebrows, which I think are the easiest ones. Shortcut there was Control and Shift to just click on a polygroup and you're gonna isolate the polygroup. And what I wanna do is I just wanna give a little bit of damage to the whole thing. So if we go back here and we check the element, you're gonna see that we have some scratches, we have some texture, but we also have some like big chunks of wood missing. So that's the kind of stuff that it's a little bit easier to, to just like sculpt. So I'm just gonna use my clay build up here to, to create like my first main like element there smooth a little bit and then i'm going to use my trim dynamic btd is the shortcut trim dynamic to really push this in as you can see we need a little bit more resolution so i'm going to go even higher like a thousand might be a little bit too much but uh since we're doing a high definition details i think it should be fine let's just wait for this to properly uh calculate Whenever ZBrush crashes like this, it's totally fine. It's actually doing its, its its thing. So just just wait for it, and it should work. Meanwhile, oh, well, let's just wait real quick. How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing good. I think I hope you're learning from all of this stuff. I've been enjoying doing all of this series. So hopefully you guys are are getting some nice tips and tricks. Let me know in the comments what do you think. We already have some suggestions to do some hard surface stuff. So next time we do a, a project like this, like a, a week long project, uh, I'll, I'll make sure to do some, some hard surface. We can maybe finish the helmet that we saw on the, on the hard surface tips. So, okay, this is taking a little bit long. I, I'm just gonna wait for it, but I wanna show you a pack of brushes that I strongly recommend you guys get, especially when doing uh, this sort of uh, stylized things. It's, car it's called the ZBrush Orb Brushes. These were done by Michael Vicente, who very generously um, is pretty much giving them away. So as you can see, they're uh, completely free. If you want to, of course, uh, add a little bit of a tip or, or something, make sure to, to include it. And these are this, all of these brushes that are very stylized. So they're going to be very helpful to, for creating this sort of like World of Warcraft, the League of Legends, the Darksiders style thing. So yeah, you can see it's really heavy. So let's go to like 600. Should be more manageable. Another thing we can do now to to slow or, or to reduce the amount of uh, processing that ZBrush does whenever we Dynamesh is to remove the projection. Projection is only good when you want to conserve detail. In this case, since we're creating the detail, there, there's not really a, a lot of things that we need to to preserve or to, or to keep. So so that's it. So um, again, just like jumping here real quick. Like once you download this guys right here. Um, you can just like extract a whole folder inside your ZBrush folder. So in my case, that's fine. It, it, it's not crashing, it's, it's just working. So in my case, I have them all the way here. So software, ZBrush. So if you go into C um, Alpha, so I think I have it on, I think it's ZBrushes. Yeah, I have them right here. And I think I have them on the, on the rock brushes myself. Yeah, so here you are. So all of the art brushes. So since they live here inside the directory on where uh, ZBrush is installed, when I open them in, in ZBrush, uh, they're gonna be right there. So I'm not gonna have to be looking for them every single time. So let's just give it a, a couple of seconds here. I'm gonna pause the video real quick. Don't wanna waste all, all of your guys' time. So let me just pause this. It's gonna be a quick jump for you. There we go. It only took like an extra minute after I paused the video. So, so there we go. So as you can see, we're in the 1 million. I'm gonna turn off projection. I'm gonna go a little bit lower, 400, I think it's fine. And as you can see, with uh, no projection turned on, it's, it's a little bit faster. Maybe we do need a little bit more because otherwise things are gonna get a little bit, whoa, what happened there? Okay, I'm just gonna go back. And let's try going to 500. There we go. So now we can go, as I mentioned here on the live box, and if I go into brushes, I'm gonna go to my brushes rock folder, and you can see that we have all of this here. So for instance, this orb slash, it's very good to add, let's increase the intensity, very good to add this sort of like nicks and necks here and there. Let we go here, see that? So very easily we can crack the surface of our, of our mask. Now this one's a little bit too intense, so let me see if we have a, a lighter one here. Uh, yeah, like this one right here, I think it's better. Yeah, no, way better. So we can just add a couple of like uh, 
cuts here and there just to give the wood a little bit of this cartoon feel. Now we're going for cartoon feel, right? Like we, we mentioned in the last video that we want to have like a very stylized effect. So that means that, that we're not going to be exaggerating things as much. Have a little bit of a projection there. That's fine. So if I take a look again here, you can see that there's a little bit of, uh, of interesting volume here. So I'm just going to like break up the silhouette of the wood on the top here just a little bit. I'm going to press Control and Shift to isolate this. And I, I do want to draw a little bit of the of like the the wood grain. And then just smooth it out. So, so we are going to have a little bit of an indication. It's not going to be super obvious, right? It's just like this. Very softly on the on the whole like wood. Very, very softly. We don't want to to overdo the detail. And then with like trim dynamic, we can just like flatten some of them out so that the wood again has a little bit of uh, grain. There we go. Now up here, usually the wood will create like this sort of like bigger marks where it, it kind of goes into the into the other side. So so I do think this is good. Whenever you want to have a Demon Standard be a little bit sharper, you can just change the alpha here to a smaller alpha. And that's going to give you a little bit of a, of a sharper look. So let's just continue this here. Let's add like a like a little bit of a knot there. Just smooth it out. So again, we, we, we don't want this things to be over uh, or, or, or yeah, over. What's the word? We don't want them to be overkill, right? It's just a little bit of an extra detail. Let's break a little bit of the corner there. And as you can see, that wood right there already looks a little bit nicer than the rest of them. So again, Damien is standard. Let's add a little bit of that wood grain. I don't want to. I don't want to overdo it again because I, I don't want the detail to be like super realistic and super intense. So I'm just gonna start adding a little bit there just to again indicate that there's a little bit of wood grain. See that texture there? So that's gonna be on the normal map. Eventually, we're gonna be doing some some bakes. So we're gonna have a, a normal map, and uh, and I just want to capture a little bit of that. So let's go there. Now for the this thing, so you can see that the grain is actually going on a different direction. So I'm again just gonna add a little bit of texture here with my clay buildup, and then use my trim dynamic to to like push it back. It's just like noise. I, I just wanna add a little bit of noise to the to the whole thing, mm -hmm. and that noise is what I'm gonna be using to to create some visual interest. Let's bevel a couple of the. Like the corners, usually the, the corners that are like uh, more exposed to the to the outside world are going to be the ones that are more damaged because they, they're going to be like bumping and, and scratching against others like surfaces. I like that one. I, I like this one right here. It looks like it, it like re definitely like got it like a big chip there. I think I think it looks cool. Uh, and again, see how we have already a little bit of texture there. So clay buildup, just a little bit of texture, pretty much everywhere. And then train dynamic to, to flatten that texture out. Just gonna have a little bit of extra thing there. Uh, for the eyes, I don't think I'm gonna do much for the eyes. I think I'm just gonna use my, my Damien standard and maybe like, like just like babble a little bit somewhere, like like simple. So sometimes uh, whenever we're doing details, you don't want to overdo things, right? So sometimes things are just like okay the way they are, and there's really no need to um, to add extra detail when when it's not needed. So so make sure you're not you're not going like super super overboard with with this sort of stuff, because then it looks like it's like really really heavy on detail. And, and you also get like a different effect, which might not be what you're going for. Um, uh, what I want to say with all of this is sometimes less is more. You, you've heard that uh, saying, right? So, so sometimes less is more. And in this case, it, it really, it really comes into into perspective because we, we do want to add like this sort of like details and scratches, but we, we don't want to overdo it. Again, just like. Add that general texture and then get rid of it. There we go.
Yeah, I like that. See that line there? It's a very nice clean line that again is going to be on the normal map and it's going to add a little bit of extra oomph to the whole thing. So let's go here. There we go. Trim dynamic. Clean this up. Now the nose, as you can see um, here on the on the Maya section, it's it's very like complete. But what we can do is we can actually go with our trim dynamic and give it a more of a of a carved wood look. So I'm gonna turn symmetry here. Trim dynamic. Huh, weird. I thought it was symmetrical. It's not, so I'm gonna have to do it manually. So I'm just gonna like add a little of this sort of like flat look everywhere. So it, it doesn't look like it's, again, uh, we, we've mentioned this before, like we, we don't want 3D to look too perfect, right? We want it to look a little bit uh, like man-made. And even if you're like the most proficient, skilled, like carpenter, carpenter, what's the proper word? You're probably gonna mess up a little bit here or there, right? So. So there's always like little details. Maybe you don't mess up, but your your assistant or someone bumps into the thing when you're about to finish, and and uh, and you get like this sort of like small mistakes, right? So very important to to add that sort of effect. See that? That's already giving us a very nice look there for the for the nose. Uh, the teeth to me doesn't seem to have a lot of things, so I'm just gonna use again my clay buildup to to bevel a little bit of the of the inside and not not all of them just just like a couple again some just some pushes here and there i don't want the teeth to look like they're like chipped or anything it's just a matter of train dynamic again that's the problem, one of the problems with, with the clay buildup. You're going to get like this effect where, where it looks very lumpy. Uh, that's why Trim Dynamics is really good to keep it keep it flat and make sure things are not uh, becoming like too organic, right? Because we, we, we do want to have the, the organic sort of shape, but Trim Dynamics is going to make sure it still feels like a, like a flat plank of wood. There we go. Let's go to this one. A little bit of texture here. A little bit of trim dynamic too. I mainly want to get rid of lo those like lines that it has there that the clay buildup usually gives you. So it's uh, it's mainly to to eliminate those. And there you go. As you can see, we're we're in a very good position. I'm gonna use my Damien standard on the lips. I don't see uh, a lot of damage, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna again, like add a couple of like indications here and there, just to indicate where the direction of the grain is going very subtly. And then with my clay buildup or trim dynamic, we can bevel like a couple of the areas. There we go. Uh, for the eyes, I'm not gonna do anything because uh, remember we had this like glowy material, so so that's fine. And now we can go back to our brushes. I'm just gonna go here into my light box and I can grab a couple of these brushes and add just some like a little bit more intense scars or, or cuts in certain areas, right? For instance, one in the nose, I think. Like a small one there on the nose looks good. That one right there looks good. It, it kind of helps accentuate the fact that he's kind of angry. A little bit of a hit there. And there we go. Now I think we're just missing the, the backside here. So I'm just gonna flatten sometimes when you don't have uh, back face masking turned on, you're gonna get that sort of detail in the back. Just draw a couple of lines here. And then trim dynamic to like really, really flatten these things out. Very good. Now, I want to finish this by the end of the week. And uh, that means that we need to be a little bit faster. If I were doing this for a video game, like the proper workflow, 
I would of course go into, um, what's the word, into Maya and do like a proper retopology uh, for the element. But we are a little bit short on time. It would take me probably about an hour to, to do a, a proper retopology for this uh, thing, for this mask. And uh, even though I love doing retopology, or I don't love it, but I like doing retopology, I don't mind it. Um, I, I know it's not super entertaining content. So I'm gonna do two things, guys. I'm gonna show you uh, how to do it like the dirty way or the fast way, which in this case is actually not even like that bad because this object's not gonna be deforming or at least not deforming in the way that we normally deform objects with, like with skin and stuff. Um, and the, and that means that we could get away with this with using this technique. This is a technique that we normally use when we're doing like environments. Think about like a rock or a pillar or a statue. Uh, and that is of course using C remeasure. So let me save this real quick because eventually if I want to do like a clean version of this and I want to like retopologize and everything, um, I will need to, to go back to this option. So let's call this Aku Aku Sculpt. Uh, 001. Now, I'm gonna clone the whole thing because I don't want to work on the main one. I want to work on a, on a clone. And on the clone object, I want to export this thing that I have right here as my high poly, which is not that high to be honest. It's it's a little bit less than a million, so so that's fine. But it, it's high enough for for our, our purposes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into C plugin. I'm gonna say decimation master, and I'm gonna decimate this guy to 250k so that we keep as much detail as possible. What this is gonna do is it's gonna analyze the whole surface of the object and it's gonna triangulate everything, pretty similar to Dynamesh. However, it will create smaller triangles for areas where there is more detail and bigger triangles for areas where the detail is not as big. This will optimize the object and it will make it a little, a little bit lighter for us to, to work with. So. It's finished, like it, it's done. The decimation has occurred. As you can see, we only have 250 active points now. However, the reason why we don't see that is because of this thing, right? So smaller triangles where we need more detail, bigger triangles where there's no detail. And uh, ZBrush is smart enough to know where the detail should be to get the best possible uh, result. So we get this. Now it's a matter of exporting this thing. So to export this, make sure, super, super important, make sure that down here on the export options, you're turning off group. Uh, that's because sometimes when you leave this on, it will export the subgroups and it will divide every single triangle into its own element. And that's a huge, huge no-no. So we're going to export this. I normally like to ex export them as uh, OBJs and I'm going to export this as high. Now I'm going to go back to the main one, to the clean one. I'm going to clone it again. And on this new clone, I'm going to use C remeasure. So I'm going to go into geometry. I'm going to go C remeasure. And I am gonna say C remesh right here. I'm gonna keep it just like at the target poly count, see what we get. Probably it's gonna be a little bit higher than what would be acceptable for, a, for an in-game object, but it shouldn't be that bad. Shouldn't be that bad. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's that's actually fairly fairly good, I would say. It's fairly, fairly good. The topology is not bad. It's it's 18,000 points. It's a little bit heavy, but it's not the end of the world. It's actually fairly, fairly usable. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep this. So now, same deal. I'm just gonna go all the way down here to the export tab, select group. We're gonna export this, and we're gonna export this as Aku Aku Scope 001 Low. Let's jump back into Maya. Uh, all of this guys or this guy, I'm just gonna delete history. I'm going to call this Aku Aku Base Mesh. And I'm going to press H to hide it. So we're not seeing anymore. This one I'm actually going to hide as well. File, import, and from our assets folder, the Aku Aku option, we're going to import our Aku Aku Sculpt Low. And as you can see, we get this. So very good geometry. It's not that bad. It's 37 triangles. It's a little bit heavy. I would call this a, a like high level element, but for like, like a cinematic render, I think it's good for in-game purposes. Certain games might be able to handle it. Uh, I would definitely optimize this quite a bit if I needed to to bring it into like a mobile game or something. But it's it's not bad. It's it's usable. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna of course delete history. I'm gonna go into mesh display and I'm gonna soften the edges so that everything's smooth. And this is what we would see in game, right? Like if we were to bring this into Unreal or Unity, this is what we would see. So I'm just gonna press number three. I'm gonna say yes, just to see how it's gonna look uh, as a smooth object. It looks good. Now I'm thinking, I, I just thought about this. 
I think it would be cool to bring this into Unreal. So I am going to bring this into Unreal. I'm going to finish the texture, do everything, and then we're going to do a very quick video in, in Unreal. And and let's see, I, I have a character inside of Unreal, or well, the, there's the basic character. Let's see if we can do a quick, like, uh, like a programming uh, exercise where, where this thing just follows my character and hovers around. I, I'll, I'll check, because I need to do it first, and then I'll see if we record it. But let me know in the comments if you want to see that, if you want to see, like, this character actually in Unreal. Now, before we do that, though, we need UVs, and I'm going to do the UVs right now in this video because everyone hates UVs, or at least people don't like UVs as much, and uh, it's important that we know how to do them. So um, I'm just going to separate this object. So I'm going to go Mesh, Separate first, and I'm going to do one piece one, one at a time. So I'm going to grab all of the pieces here, UV, and I'm going to do a planar mapping. If you've seen my video on the on the intro to Maya, you know my, like, my formula for, for UVs. And it's just a planar mapping to create the base UV. And then we're going to use the 3D cut and show UV tool. Now, this section right here, the most important part is probably the front section. However, the most visible part is probably the back section. And when we're moving with the character, we're probably going to see the back section the most. So I'm going to try to keep the best area uh, up front. So I'm going to go UV, 3D cut and show UV tool. I'm going to cut right here. And this, my friends, oh my god, this is the reason why Siri meshing sometimes sucks. As you can see, we have something called a spiral. And spirals are super, super bad. As you can see, it will cut everything here. And that's that's not what we want. So how do we avoid these spirals? Well, there's a couple of ways. I'm going to create a little bit of a cut here. Actually, down here, which I know we're going to be using eventually. And here. And now if I double click, or if I just like drag and, and, and move right here, I should be able to connect those points. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to, like, I, I can't just do a double click because as you can see, well, in this case, it, it worked nicely because now it cuts right there. And, and it, this is working kind of like a stopper. It, it stops the spiral from, from continuing because it sees that that's where the whole thing just like cuts. So I'm going to stop right there, go here because I want to I wanna keep the corners a little bit cleaner. So there, there, uh, there. And there. So let me repeat this thing that I just did with the other, like, uh, like plank. Sometimes you do get the spiral. Sometimes you don't. When you don't, of course, that's that's great. But most of the times, as you can see there, we get the, the spiral. So again, we can create like a little bit of a, of a stopper here, and a stopper here. And if we do this double click, you can see that this one actually found something. It's like a triangle. There we go. That's another triangle. Actually, when I go a little bit like. So I'm just going to go here and then double click. Mm, still went through. Shouldn't have though. It still did. That's fine. That's fine. Let's just, uh, oh, I'm lost. <laughs> Sorry. I got confused there. There we go. So let's, let's go here. That's fine. I mean, since this is wood and it's not like skin or we're not going to have like any sort of like logo or anything, I'm not too worried about this. I know, and you guys know, because we've seen this before, uh, we know how to how to make sure that the that the seams are not as obvious inside of uh, inside of uh, what's the word substance substance painter. We'll just draw there. There we go. Now we're gonna go with the next one. UB, three D cut and so. See, that's perfect. That's a that's a perfect that's a perfect cut. So so now it's just a matter of. Uh, of finding like the, the corners here. Remember, these corners are important. I think we saw them when we were doing the grenade, probably. And these are important because they're gonna help relax the corners, and, and we're not gonna we're not gonna have as much stretching on the on those areas of the element. Let's go for the last one. Usually, when you don't change the silhouette of your objects, yeah, another spiral. Let's just go here. Usually, when you don't change the silhouette of your objects, it, it, it tends to avoid spirals as much as possible. That's why a good old, good old fashioned retopology will never fail you, because you know you're not gonna get, you're not gonna, you shouldn't get spirals. So, also spirals, they're not only bad for UVs, they're extremely ugly for uh, like skinning purposes. So if you're you're gonna be doing uh, like the formation, like think about like an arm or something, then spirals are, are like a no go. This ones there's are fairly easy. I'm just gonna do a cut on the back, and that's completely fine. Same here. Just cut on the back and that's fine. We're just gonna have the front and the back of like the coin. 
these guys should be like spheres as well. So very similar. I'm just gonna cut like here, here, and here. Let me just double check that the cut did happen. UV 3D cut. There we go. There we go. So all of those are ready. Now these two guys, which are pretty much like planks. Now this ones, I am gonna try and prioritize the, the front view. So, so let me go UV, 3D cut. Oh, another spiral. Okay, let's go to the corner here. Corner, and then this guy is gonna create a corner right there. And a little bit of a corner here. There, there, and there. Everything seems to be in order. Now this one, I'm gonna go UV, 3D cut. Remember, we already did the planar mapping. That's why I'm, I'm able to jump from one to the other rather rather fast. So that's the back side. Careful there. That's this one right there. I'm going for like the, see this little shape right here where, where I see that there's three lines connecting? That's where I know that the, that the element's gonna stop. So that's where I'm shooting for. There we go. Uh, nose. Nose might be a little bit trickier. It shouldn't be that tricky, but uh, it does have a very weird nog topology, though. So I'm gonna try to cut like the back side of the of the of the nose. So like this line right here. Let's start with something simple. Okay, like the bottom side there is it's not bad. It's not ideal though. Okay, let's go like further in. There we go. That one. That one looks good. It is a sort of a spiral, but we can actually like go here and then just like complete it going here to the front. And that should unfold rather nicely. Let's do an extra cut there and here just to help. It's not the cleanest UB, but it should work. This one should be fairly easy because we, we really didn't do anything. So I'm gonna go like back here, in here. And I think we can leave it like this. I, I normally would cut it, but I think it's... No, you know what? I, I think I am going to cut it. And the reason I want to cut it is I want to see if we can get it to, like, stretch in a, in a straight line as, as nicely as possible. Because that way we're going to get a, a nicer uh, wood grain texture. Oh, I'm not sure. No. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm debating. Let's try it like this. Let's try it like this and do a triplanar or, or projection mapping, and then we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it another way. Now, for all the teeth here, I'm gonna show you a very quick little trick because they're very hidden. So, for this guys, I'm just gonna say uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna combine them. I'm gonna go top view, and I'm gonna grab all of the middle faces. Like this, I'm just gonna say UB, planar mapping from the C axis, apply. So we're pretty much just cutting straight through the middle. It's not gonna be a straight line. You can see some of them have like this weird lines right there, but it, for, for the shape that they have, it, it should be perfectly fine. Now I'm just gonna grab everything, combine to a single object, because we wanna work on all of the UBs at the same time. Delete history, UB, UB editor. Now everything's cut, I'm just gonna go here, unfold and unfold. If we don't have any angles, if we the cut, if we did the cuts properly, and if everything uh, is nicely, uh, if we did the, the things that we should have done, then the UVs should be working nicely here, which they are. Now it's just a matter of uh, getting all of them into a 4K map. So I'm gonna go modify, layout, click here, and I'm gonna say 4K map, just one on one. I'm gonna do a shell pre-scaling, uh, shell pre-rotation vertical, and shell pre-scaling preserve 3D ratios, and hit apply. What this should do is it should pack everything in such a way that the elements have the exact same uh, resolution uh, than the rest of the objects. So as you can see, everyone shares the exact same uh, resolution and then we have this very nice thing. The other thing that I did was changing that vertical orientation so that it knows that as long as it can do it or as much as it can do it, it will try to align everything in a vertical way. Uh, the only thing that did not got that uh, treatment is this nose. So I am gonna move it like manually to get it into the proper uh, section. And uh, yeah, there we go. I think I think that's it. Yeah, we, we do have a little bit of extra space here and there, but everything is working nice. And I know that the bakes are gonna be working very, very nicely with this thing. 
Now, some of you very, um, very intelligent, intelligently have uh, realized that we're missing a couple of things. We are missing the feathers and we are missing the little like leaf, uh, uh, like beard that he has right here. Now, uh, for those of you that are very uh, intelligent, which I know it's all of you, you probably have pointed out that this uh, feather right here, we could do one and just duplicate it and rotate it around. So we don't need to share the 4K texture. We can have like a very small 512 by 5 or 5, uh, yeah, 512 by 512 texture for just that leaf. And that should be good. And since the feathers are actually a little bit bigger, it might be a good idea to have them as separate textures as well. Uh, there's one thing we can do here, just in case you want to uh, have a, something a little bit closer to, to like the final product. And that is, I'm going to go into modeling, mesh tools, create polygon. And I'm just going to create a polygon to, to sim symbolize or, or kind of like get the idea of where these things are going to be. So this polygons that I'm creating, these are the ones that we're going to be using eventually for the, for the feathers. Because they're just going to be planes. They're going to be planes with transparency, but I'm going to show you how to do it in the best possible way. So that when we bring this into Unreal, everything looks very, very nice. So there we go. So these three guys, I'm just going to say uh, uh, mesh display reverse. So they're facing us. Now we turn off this thing. You can see that our little Aku Aku is, uh, is looking very nice, right? So I'm going to stop the video right here, guys. Make sure to try and get to this point. As you can see, it took me about 40 minutes to do so. So it's probably going to take you about an hour, depending on how fast you are. And, uh, and in the next video, we will be covering the texturing process. We're going to jump into, into Substance, and I want to show you some cool tricks there to do this sort of like tune shading. So it's not going to be a tune shader. It's not a shader per se. It's, it's more like the painting techniques that we're going to be using. So um, that's it. Now, make sure, guys, make sure to tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to have a special video. We're going to pause this guy for just a second or for just a day. And, and I'm going to show you something very cool. I don't want to spoil the surprise because it's something that a lot of you have been asking for. And hopefully, you do enjoy what we're going to be uh, taking a look at. So uh, that's it for me, guys. Make sure to leave a like, leave your comments, subscribe, share, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.